My name is Sean O'Dowd and I'm a consultant neurologist at Tala University Hospital. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about living with progressive supranuclear palsy, PSP, or cortical basal degeneration, CBD, during the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. PSP and CBD are conditions which cause both motor and non-motor symptoms. And by non-motor symptoms, we include common problems such as sleep disturbance and mood changes, including anxiety. The coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is a cause of considerable anxiety for the population at large, and patients with underlying neurological disorders may find that pre-existing anxiety has become worse or they may have begun to experience anxiety symptoms for the first time. Some patients describe a sense of panic or a feeling of powerlessness over the situation. However, by following some basic advice, there are some things that we can all do to reduce these feelings. Firstly, use reliable sources of information. For general information about the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic, use the HSE and HSPC websites. On these websites, you will also find information about the concept of cocooning, which is relevant for nearly all patients with PSP and CBD. For general information about the pandemic, use trusted Irish media sources Remember that the UK's approach to this has been quite different. Secondly, basic advice around hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette has a very strong evidence base in reducing the transmission of this virus and is something which we can all do. If concern about you or your loved one with PSP or CBD contracting the virus is something the situation. Stop and pause and think for a few moments. Have you been exposed to someone who has the virus? And if so, was that at a distance of less than two meters for more than 15 minutes? Particularly high risk of having developed or contracted the virus. If, however, having adopted some of these approaches, anxiety has become a disabling symptom, talk to your GP or your neurology team. It's important to say that virtually all medical services are continuing to operate, but now we're tending to use telephone and other forms of communication for safety rather than the traditional face-to-face -face clinic appointment. Sleep is another element of PSP and CBD which can be disrupted. We know that patients with these conditions are particularly prone to sleep disturbance. As I often say to patients, bad nights can make for bad days. It's worth giving a little bit of consideration to some of the symptoms of a physical nature that can impact sleep quality. For example, motor symptoms such as stiffness, or difficulty or discomfort turning in bed can be identified and treated either with looking at types of bed linen or different types of medication and these are things which your neurology service will be able to guide you through. Patients with Parkinsonian disorders are more prone to restless legs syndrome. This is a common disorder and we know that it's very disruptive to sleep. The reason for this wakefulness also have what are called periodic limb movements in sleep. These limb movements have a very negative effect on sleep quality and are often mistaken as insomnia. Patients can awaken feeling unrefreshed because essentially they've been experiencing episodes of waking during the night because of the limb movements that they may not be aware of. If you think you have restless legs, again, talk to your GP or your neurology team because this is something which is very treatable. Another sleep disorder which is seen in Parkinsonian conditions is called REM sleep behaviour disorder. This is where a patient acts out their dreams physically and can lead to injury to the patient or sometimes the bed partner. 
While we tend to see more of this in typical Parkinson's disease, we can also see it in PSP or CBD. This is also something which can be quite effectively treated with medication. Insomnia itself can be part and parcel of PSP or CBD, aside from motor symptoms. This means difficulty initiating or maintaining sleep. There are some simple measures that you can take which can help with this. Firstly, reduce the use of caffeine and cut it out entirely after about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. This includes tea, coffee and Coca-Cola. Use decaffeinated versions instead. Try to remove all screens from the bedroom. Try to keep the get up out of bedtime fairly steady day by day even if the night's sleep before was not of good quality. And try to resist, if that's the case, the temptation to have a daytime nap. Some patients with neurological disorders can find these measures difficult to implement. And if that's the case, again, talk to your neurology team or your GP. There are medications which are well tolerated, which can help in this setting. Thank you for listening. Remember that your neurology team and GP are there to help during this difficult time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gareth McDermott, clinical neuropsychologist at Talley University Hospital. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about self-care for carers and family members of people with PSP and CBD. To put it simply, self-care is the act of looking after yourself to try and meet your own physical needs, your psychological and emotional needs, and your social needs. And these are needs that we all have that can be a little bit more difficult to meet when we're looking after a family member. In a family context, these things are all about balance, balance and priorities, so meeting the different priorities we have within the household. There's no one right or wrong way to do self-care. It's going to be a little bit different for each of us. But there are some core fundamentals that hold true for everybody, and they're not very surprising. So they are, for example, number one, making sure we eat a well-balanced diet. Number two, getting a good night's sleep, or where that's not possible, at least facilitating the possibility of one through having good habits around bedtime. Number three, it's um, dealing with problems and stresses as they come up. Number four, maintaining social connection and interaction with others. These things may not be easy at the best of times, um, but this is probably as good a time as any to stop and think about how they feature for you. So perhaps after this video, go and have a conversation with a family member or a friend about your own needs. The coronavirus pandemic may make it even more difficult than normal to look after your family member with PSP or CPD. And it may make it even more difficult for you to look after yourself and engage in good self-care. Routines may be disrupted. It may be more difficult than normal to access external help and support when you need it. At the same time, you may be feeling more anxious than normal. You may be focused more on the future than you normally would be. And you may be struggling to focus on tasks at hand. These are all parts of the normal psychological response that we have to a crisis or a difficult situation. And for the vast majority of us, all of those signs will settle down and return to normal once the pandemic passes. I'd like to emphasize the importance of daily routine in looking after yourself and your family member at this difficult time. Routines give us a sense of predictability and controllability over our day. So these are things that we probably all need right now. They're particularly important where a family member might have a cognitive impairment because they sort of take the edge off some of the confusion and disorientation that changes to routine can cause for some people. I'd also recommend making sure that the routine stays quite varied. So mixing up, you know, doing your chores, engaging in physical exercise, challenging your brain, time for rest and time for fun. The middle of a crisis or the pandemic is probably not the best time to try and develop a whole new range of skills to deal with your own self-care. So it's worth remembering that you've entered this whole situation with a set of skills and strengths that you've been relying on all along and you will continue to do so now. I'd like to give a couple of simple ideas though um, that you might be able to think about. The first of these is on a daily basis to try and carve out a little bit of time for yourself. Now I know that in some households that's really difficult, particularly where you feel the need to be tuned into your family member or aware of what your family member is doing at all times. However, given the restrictions in place and how difficult it is to be getting out and about right now, 
Having that time to yourself every day, even if only for a few minutes, it may be a lifeline. The second idea is a piece of advice for those moments where you do feel under pressure or overwhelmed. Much of that sense of being overwhelmed comes from focusing on things that are outside of our control. And the advice is to bring yourself back to what is within your control here and now. For example, we can't control the coronavirus pandemic and we can't control the future. We can't even control what we think or what we feel about those things. What is within our control here and now is what we do. So the advice is to come up with a short list of things, actions that you can take um, to try and walk yourself out of, those, out of those moments of being overwhelmed. And it might be as simple as making a cup of tea, making a sandwich, spending some time in the garden, speaking to a friend or family member by phone, or listening to some favorite music. The final point I'd like to make is for you just to think about the importance and the use of breathing techniques. Now, some of you may already do this. If so, I'd encourage you to share that, that skill with other people around you. For those of you that don't, there are a whole range of guidelines and instructions for these things available on a Google search. But at their most simple, it's a case of taking a slow, deep breath in for a count of around about four, holding it there for a count of around about three, and then blowing it out again for a count of around about floor, four. So we do that slowly, steadily, and smoothly. And that can help us to slow down and just focus on the task at hand. Thanks a million for watching this video and I do hope that some of these ideas are of use to you. Hello, my name is Anne Belton and I'm a Chartered Physiotherapist. I work in Neurology in Tally University Hospital. Movement and exercise is good for us all. It helps to keep us healthy and improves our mood. We know from research that movement and exercise can help maintain muscle strength, balance and flexibility. People with PSP and CBD may have difficulties with coordination, flexibility and balance. Therefore, when considering what exercise to do, safety is the most important factor. Hopefully, you'll have been given an exercise program individualised for your needs by a chartered physiotherapist. For many people at the moment, the restrictions due to cocooning mean it's more difficult to get out and about. However, there are many things you can do to keep active within your own home. But remember, safety is the most important factor. Some people have difficulties with eye movements, so it's harder to navigate around your own environment. So maybe ask a family member or carer to clear away any trip hazards such as rugs or stools. If you have problems with your balance, especially backwards, there are lots of things you can do safely in lying and sitting down. Muscles in the trunk, neck, arms and legs can get stiff, so it's important to do stretches to keep them limber. Stiffness in the feet can impact on walking. Stiffness and clumsiness in the hands can impact on your ability to do everyday tasks. For some people, standing up or moving from bed to chair is difficult. So it's important if you require help to get it before you move. It's easier to stand up from a higher than a lower chair. And if you do stand up, stand up slowly and remember to have your balance before you take off. If you are doing balance exercises and standing, it's useful to stand holding onto a support and maybe with a chair behind you. And if you need assistance, ask your carer or family member to be beside you. If you've been given a walker, please use it when you're practicing walking. For some people, it's tricky to turn on the spot, so it can be easier to turn in a U shape. If you feel your condition has changed, please contact your local GP or your neurology team. Thank you very much.